left LeBron James. It's been media day in the NBA last couple of days, so you see some coaches talking, some about politics, some about basketball. You see LeBron talking. And when Kyrie Irving left LeBron James, my takeaway is, ah, well, you don't leave Magic Johnson. You don't leave Michael Jordan. You don't leave LeBron James. That's not what you do. You don't do that. There's only about, you know, every decade there's one or two transformative players. You, you don't leave LeBron. But then yesterday I had one of those moments. I understood it. I got it. Of course, I didn't know this before. I found this out yesterday. LeBron James, listen carefully to the word he uses talking about Kyrie Irving. At some point, when he was ready to, to take over the keys, I was ready to give them to him. Um, so the only thing I'm upset about is that he took a lot of DNA and the blueprints now to Boston. That's the only thing I'm upset about, really. Other than that, I mean, I wish the kid, wish the kid great health. Um, and uh, the kid wanted to do what was best for his, uh, I guess, for his career. I try to do whatever I could, just try to help the kid be as great as he could be or as great as he wanted to be. And, uh, you know, and that's it. He used the word kid four times. LeBron's 32. Kyrie's 25. Kyrie's a six-year veteran, has a net worth of 55 to $85 million. He's an all-star. He's an American superstar. He's got a shoe deal and TV commercials, a movie coming out, a number one draft pick, hit the winning shot in an NBA championship. You're 32. He's 25. You called him a kid four times in one minute. That's to us. What did you call him when the cameras weren't on? On almost any other team, Kyrie is the man, and you just called him the kid. Talented, rich, accomplished people don't want to be called kid. LeBron said it four times. What's he say when the cameras aren't on? Listen, this has been LeBron's league for 12 years. I completely understand. I see the egos in my business for marginal talents. I get him seeing himself as the elder statesman of the league, the Pied Piper. Many players do follow him. He has largely created this player mobility movement. But it is no longer LeBron's league. The Warriors went 16-1 and in the playoffs. It's their league. And Kyrie knows that. And LeBron's run as the king is over. I'm not saying he's not the best player. But by no means is this king running the kingdom. Those days are over. The Warriors will until they start fighting and don't get along. Smart, rich, talented, accomplished people. Do not want to be called, when we only have seven years difference, kid. It's the bad LeBron, the passive-aggressive LeBron. I never understood Kyrie leaving. I didn't. You don't leave Magic. You don't leave Duncan. Because you just don't get them. They're once in a friend. San Antonio will never get a player like Tim Duncan. The Lakers will probably never get a player as good as Magic. The Bulls certainly won't get a guy as good as MJ. So when you get them, you suck it up. But once Kyrie hit the game-winning shot, movie, shoe deal, net worth, best finisher in the game, you can't call that guy kid. And you certainly can't call him kid with the cameras rolling and the nation listening. That's the passive-aggressive LeBron that wears people out. And LeBron knows what he's doing there because himself, he himself is so sensitive to the words that people use to describe him. Yeah. So he knows what he was doing. Okay, just, just again, 32 and 25, listen to it again. Do we have it? At some point, when he was ready to, to take over the keys, I was ready to give them to him. Um, so... The only thing I'm upset about is that he took a lot of the DNA and the blueprints now to Boston. That's the only thing I'm upset about, really. Other than that, I mean, I wish the kid, wish the kid great health. Um, and 
Uh, the kid wanted to do what was best for his, uh, I guess, for his career. I tried to do whatever I could, just try to help the kid be as great as he could be or as great as he wanted to be, and, uh, you know, and that's it. That just doesn't work for me. That just does not work for me at all. Here's a story that's breaking. I don't want to spend too much time on it because, ugh. NCAA coaches among 10 charged with fraud and corruption. In New York today, federal prosecutors have announced charges of fraud and corruption in college basketball, including four coaches. The probe revealed numerous instances of bribes paid by athlete advisors, financial advisors, associate basketball coaches. Yuck to exert influence over student athletes. Some global marketing guy, y'all yeah, say it again, some global marketing guy at Adidas was funneling money to recruits. There's a bunch of coaches involved, but here's a program that also appears to be involved. What a shocker, Louisville. You know Louisville, brothel on campus. I had no idea what was happening. $100,000 funneled to a recruit in exchange for a commitment. Rick Patino, I'm sure, didn't have any idea about that or the brothel. In fact, I'm told Patino didn't even have any idea about the affair he was having with one of the strength trainer's wives. He didn't know about that either. I mean, he got, he's in the dark. He doesn't know what's happening. Here is the recruit they landed named Brian Bowen. According to the story, the Cardinals were late to the table. He was a five-star player. They didn't recruit him. And suddenly he wanted to play for Louisville. Rick Patino talked about it at the time. How did we get him? Well, we got lucky on this one, Terry. The story goes, um, I had a uh, AAU uh, director call me and said, would you be interested in a basketball player? And I said, who? And he said, I said, yes, I saw him against another great player from Indiana. And I said, yeah, I would be really interested. And but they had to come in unofficially, pay for the hotel, pay for their meals. And we spent zero dollars recruiting a five-star athlete who I loved when I saw him play. So in my 40-some-odd years of coaching, this is the luckiest I've been. I mean, just just random. He selected us. Uh, coach, there was $100,000 paid to him. Well, I mean, how would I supposed to know? I mean, it's only my program. He was the best recruit our program brought in. How would I know about that or the brothel? I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude, but Rick Patino is starting to look greasier than a fast food apron. Okay. Drip, 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 drip. Ego, 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 manipulation, 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 manipulation. Believe what you want, folks. Believe what you want. There's all sorts of programs involved in this, but there's one really, Louisville. But hey, I'm, I'm sure this can all be explained. I mean, how's a guy supposed to know if you got the bunny ranch, you know, 45 feet from your coach's office? I mean, what, what, coach? I mean, seriously, it never happens to Nick Saban, though. Never happened to Bobby Knight, though. Okay. Maybe I'm just reaching. Take the first step towards getting in the best shape of your life. Get a Bullfrog Pro training system. Frogfitness.com, the worst fun you've ever had. Christine with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. The Bunny Ranch is a little bit of a reach. A little bit. I mean, did you read that story on that thing they had on campus? Yes. It was... Uh, it was an imported Bunny Ranch. How come a football coach in college who has 20 coaches and 85 players, Nick Saban knows what his players are doing, but a basketball coach who's got like three coaches and 12 players, of which seven play, I, I just can't keep my eyes on everybody the, here. The, the disappointing thing, like, that's disappointing, and also Adidas's involvement in it. Like, Adidas has made some really bad moves lately. Listen, like college basketball recruiting is gross. Now, I know my former employer will line up all their basketball analysts, the ones they still have, and they'll all make excuses for coaches, but it's funny how the college football coaches... Harbaugh's got, you know, a hundred guys running around the office. He can keep track of all of them. But at Louisville, yeah, yeah Rick's got this down the street and that down the street. And I, I mean, gosh, what can a coach do? I just can't keep. If you have a company and it's 12 people, it's a lot easier to know what's going on than a company with 1,200 people. Couldn't we acknowledge that? And it looks like a lot of the people being arrested are assistant coaches. So yeah. probably the, the cover guys. Yeah. Yeah, Rick is right. 
At the Patriots game, many of the players decided to take a knee during the national anthem, and Bill Belichick was asked about it after the game and said that he wasn't going to address it at that point, but that he would later, and now he has. Oh. He's released a statement. Mm. Um, it's pretty long, so I'll only read a part of it. It says, I've coached football for over four decades, and one of the greatest things about being in this environment is the diversity of people, backgrounds, viewpoints, and relationships we're fortunate to experience. Discussions occur between myself, individual players, groups, and the entire team on an ongoing basis. I'm going to keep the specifics of those conversations private. I will do what I feel is best for the team in my role as head coach, and collectively we'll work together to find the best way to proceed. So it doesn't directly acknowledge Donald Trump or the kneeling or the protests, but right. I think I'm happy that he addressed it. I think what he's saying is I understand that there's a lot of different opinions in the locker room and kind of as you said yesterday do what feels right for you yeah i mean christine this is a very fluid situation mm -hmm. so you have a league the nba has never done this the nfl has tied itself to the military and patriotism and now you have this fluid situation and the media is pointing fingers this is how you should act and this is how you should act and this is how you should act and first of all every owner is different Every culture's different. Yeah. Every state's different. Dallas is conservative. Seattle's liberal. San Francisco is liberal. Charlotte may be conservative. I don't know if it is or not. It's in the South, so I would guess it's probably a little more conservative. Yeah. So, I mean, the reality is every owner and team has a different culture, plays to different advertisers, has a different sensibility, has a different influence in the locker room. Some have star quarterbacks. Some have J.J. Watt. Some are dealing with national uh, natural tragedies. The Texans, the Miami Dolphins, like like this, and there's no one way to address this. No. It's hard. And I don't think it's just the media that's saying, hey, do it this way or do it that way. I think a lot of people have very yeah. strong feelings about this. What I don't like is where you feel like certain locker rooms or certain coaches are telling their team to all do the same thing, and it's putting an unnecessary pressure on guys to do something that they don't feel comfortable with. Right. That, I don't like that either. Right. And I feel like a lot of people, and I, I understand both sides of this, but a lot of people are saying, hey, if you're kneeling, that's a direct um, disrespect to the military members. And I, I don't necessarily look at it that way. I don't think that just because you're kneeling, it's yeah. saying, I, I don't yeah. appreciate the military and people that are fighting for our country. It's that you're not happy with what's going on with the way that the United States is being run right now. Yeah, and I again, I'm not a kneeler for the anthem. It's just not, it's not something I'm going right. to do. Um, but I, I think everybody gets very judgmental and, and puts this, I'm a patriot and you're not, and I'm a better American than you. And I look at all the amazing immigrants that have come to America. My mom came from Great Britain at 14 years old on a boat by herself, leaving a situation that was very perilous by herself. She came over to New York City, and her route was that of millions of immigrants who come to this country, feel so lucky to be here, work so hard. And then there's certain Americans that... I don't think sometimes we appreciate the fabric yeah. and the tapestry of our country, that what makes us great is our diversity yeah. and is our willingness to tolerate others' actions and opinions. Right. That's my mom was the immigrant. Yeah. And the scary thing right now is I think that there's such a huge divide right now. And that, Everywhere. that is what's making me very nervous. And I wish that there could be a little bit more harmony in working towards a common goal yeah. than this. Moving on. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr., we know, was penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct for his imitating of a dog peeing in mm. the end zone. I didn't like this. So, I know you didn't like this. I didn't mm. really either, um, but I think I understand what he was doing, and we can't really understand the mind of a receiver. Like, you've got to have some crazy in you, I'm assuming, to do the things yeah, that he does. However, here he is explaining now what was going on in his mind during this whole thing. We needed to make a play. We're down, what, 14? Okay, we need to make a play. We need a spark. I don't care if you kick it from the five-yard line on our side. We need to make it a play. It does pick up a penalty. I mean, it, it does. Could hurt, it could hurt you. It I could. Mean, Rose has covered it. Being... It didn't end up being detrimental, which is the main thing. When I get in that end zone, I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to try and spark this team. And uh, the consequences are going to be what they are. It's like life. You have to deal with the consequences. And that's something I could take. You know, our team, we, we were motivated from that. I don't think it set us back any. I just don't think we finished. Uh, the Mara family did say today they were very disappointed. You know, Christine, I was talking on Speak for Yourself yesterday about this. The Giants are going through kind of a weird um, cultural shift. Okay, okay, so it's always been a strong ownership, strong head coach organization. Now they have a head coach who doesn't look, sound, or feel like a head coach. So they have weak coaching, weak management. They went from Tom Coughlin, a Hall of Famer, 
powerful, uh, respected Super Bowls. Ben McAdoo looks, sounds, and feels like a coordinator. So you got that issue. It's also been a very blue blood conservative franchise. The fan base in New York, for anybody that's listening that hasn't been to New York, the Giants fan base is older. If you go to a Giants game, Jets fans are younger and louder and rowdier. Giants fans are blue bloods. They're like Michigan football fans. They're like uh, Kentucky basketball fans. They've been going to games for 50 years. But your star player now, Christine, is a uh, youthful, sometimes in the eyes of Giants fans, inappropriate player. And it's a weird spot for the Giants. They're this, you know, classic IBM, and yet this engineer, this new engineer they have, who's their best engineer by far, is outspoken, takes shots at people. I think the Giants are, they have to reshift. They're, they're, a, they're in a cultural crisis in that building. I just have, this is, I might be going off topic, but what's appropriate? What can we say is appropriate? I just know that's football? not appropriate. But, and I, th this again, you're going to think is off topic, but I was actually at a game this weekend and I kept thinking about this. Professional cheerleaders or dancers, I, until we can really figure out that situation, I, I have a hard time calling anything else inappropriate. We literally have women whose job it is to wear skimpy clothes and dance around for the men. Like, I get it in college, high school. I was a cheerleader, too. There's some athleticism yeah. to it. There are male cheerleaders that go along with it, and it's more about athleticism. But this is literally women in skimpy clothes cheering for men. And they're allowed to twerk, but the guys in the field aren't. Like, this, I just... Yeah. I can't say what's appropriate and inappropriate until that situation... Listen, the NFL rectified. is like a lot of pro leagues. There's a lot of hypocrisy. There's A lot. Yeah, there is. I mean, I... I uh, I can separate players from cheerleaders, but your point is well taken that you're selling sexuality on the sidelines, right. but a hip thrust by a player is outrageous. And why? One's a male and one's a woman? Legitimate point. I think it's, it's a legitimate point. I, yeah. I initial, like, like your Kyrie Irving point. I didn't get it initially, but, <laughs> but it I'm coming time. around a little bit. I'm on so it. glad. I'm so glad. <laughs> of course you are. Uh, and finally, Russell Westbrook has yet to sign his extension. He has until October 16th to do so. Um, he says that it, he hasn't signed it because of the birth of his son and that he's had a lot of travel plans. I don't buy that necessarily. Uh, but here he is talking about um, Oklahoma City and his future, whether it will be there or not. Like I told you know you guys last year, um, this is the place I want to be. Um, you know, I love being here. I love the fans. I love the people here. I'm back now um, to get a chance to simmer down and uh, get everything situated. And obviously now with a few changes, uh, you know, I'm good. You know, I like where I'm at and I, and I like where our team is. I don't think he's going to leave. I I'll be totally honest. I don't think he'll leave. I've never, I think Russell Westbrook, that's his franchise. Yeah. That is abs, that, that is not Paul George's franchise. Those guys are leasing property. That's not Melo's franchise. That's not that's not Sam Presti's franchise. That is Russell Westbrook's franchise. Very few players can say that. I don't think Westbrook will ever leave. I do not. I agree. I think he's probably waiting because he wants to see what's going to happen with the team before he yeah. makes a complete commitment on his own and wants to see if Paul George uh, works out there and maybe Carmelo. Yeah. Um, and take it from there. There's no reason to jump early on it. No. No. Christine the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Lie News. Let's bring him in. He's going to be a Hall of Famer, 14-time Pro Bowler, a Fox NFL analyst.